Yo, brawlers, this is your man, Glass Chin, and you're watching Glass Chin's Boxing. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yo, brawlers, Happy New Year. I wish you all a great 2022. Thank you for your continued support of my channel. With 196 new subscribers in December, please continue to comment on my videos and engage with me on Instagram. I really do enjoy hearing your boxing thoughts and opinions. Boxing kicked off the year with a great heavyweight card from the PBC. In the opening contest, Victor Faust and Iago Caladze set the standard for the night high with a five knockdown barn burner of a fight. Caladze, battered and beaten, getting dropped three times in two rounds, showed great heart, pleading with the ref to let him continue. If you haven't seen this fight, please go back and watch it. What a battle to start the year. Respect to Victor Faust for weathering two heavy knockdowns early and pulling off the win. He improves his record to 9 wins, 0 losses and 7 knockouts. I will keep a close eye on the Ukrainian in the future. Ali Aaron Demerizan rose to the occasion, taking the ball by the horns and outgunning, outlasting and completely outmanning Gerald Washington. He now has 4 wins on a bounce since his only loss, a 10 round points decision to FA Jagba back in July 2019. There should be some big fights in the future for the former 2016 Olympian. Gerald Washington came out strong, looking in good shape in the first two rounds, picking and mixing up his shots well, but Demizen took control of the fight in the third round, really piling on the pressure in the fourth and dictating the action until the fight was stopped in the eighth. I was concerned when Washington weighed in 20 pounds heavier than normal. He showed stamina problems in the Charles Martin fight. That was his last fight nearly two years ago, so the added weight and inactivity wasn't a good combo. Washington took a lot of punishment in this fight and has now lost 5 out of his last 7 fights, getting stopped in all 5. I wish him well in the future, but it's time to hang up the gloves. Jonathan Rice vs Michael Coffey too is what boxing is all about. Two big men duking it out for 10 rounds straight, both men showing tremendous heart. Coffey was in trouble in the 4th, taking the same shot that hurt him in the first fight. He took a lot of punishment with 2 cuts and his eyes swollen shut, but showed the heart of a marine, not ever looking for a way out. Rice did well to make it the distance, looking physically exhausted, struggling to get off his stall at one point. I hope anyone who was pissed about paying pay-per-view money for this card realised it was value for money with the big effort both men put in here. Rice now moves on to some bigger and better things. I wouldn't mind seeing him matched against Mike Belogan after his big win over Trey Lepe Morrison. Al Heyman better get his checkbook out. Apologies for the footage being from the first fight, but the rematch hasn't been uploaded to YouTube yet. Anyone who hasn't seen it, please watch the rematch when it's available. It was a great fight. In the co-main event, Frank Sanchez took on career journeyman Christian Hammer. Sanchez failed to impress. He didn't exactly set the world on fire. He seemed content to win this fight on points. The fight never really caught fire and seemed like light sparring at times. Hammer looked out of shape with his body looking soft, taking the fight on late notice. He was last out in October, retiring on his stall with a bicep injury against Huey Fury. Hammer spent the 10 rounds walking Sanchez down, but doing very little in the way of offence. But he seemed to take Sanchez's power with no problems, and even laughed at his body shots in the ninth and after the flash knockdown in the 10th. Canelo spoke highly of his stablemate in the lead up to this fight, saying Sanchez would be a world champion in the next year. Based on this fight, that prediction is laughable. Sanchez had the perfect platform to build on his win over F.A. Jagbar, yet failed to impress, waiting until the 10th round to start laying in the lever. Hammer has shown guts and a decent chin over the years, going the distance with Alexander Povekin and Luis Ortiz, among others. But on short notice and out of shape, if Sanchez is the real deal, you really would have expected him to have stepped it up and to have stopped Hammer in the mid-rounds. Maybe Sanchez wanted to get some rounds in the bank. I don't think anybody would be queuing around the block to see him fight next. Especially with the likes of Faust, Rice and Desmizen coming to fight and impressing on the same bill and the great main event that followed this bout. I don't know, maybe I'm being too hard on Sanchez. It's hard to critique a fighter who won every round and dropped their opponent. All fighters have off nights, but there was just a lack of hunger in his performance. He seemed to be just going through the motions. You can see the fire in the belly of up-and-comers like Gerald Anderson. I'd like to see a little more aggression in Sanchez's next fight. It will be interesting to see who he's matched up with next. I won't be surprised if you see Rice and Demise and calling him out. Who would you like to see him fight next, Brawlers? Do you think Sanchez is ready for a top 10 fighter? Let me know in the comments section. I will be doing a post-fight video on Luis Ortiz vs Charles Martin later today. And I have a little Glass in Tuesday video of John Fury dropping tomorrow. So as always, Brawlers, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.